Recently, I was doing some research for a new video when I stumbled upon this document which talks about Tartary in 1835, so I wanted to share it with you. The document itself on Google Books is attributed to William Pinnock, however the title page indicates that this was adapted from Pinnock's work by a man called Edwin Williams. A comprehensive system of modern geography and history revised and enlarged from the London edition of Pinnock's Modern Geography and adapted to the use of academies and schools in the United States. William Pinnock was a British publisher and educational writer in the early 1800s who transitioned from schoolmaster to bookseller. In 1837, at the age of 35, he moved to London where he began publishing cheap educational works. Pinnock employed a style of teaching in the form of short manuals containing a series of questions and answers, like a modern-day examination, and this proved popular as we can see by this adapted version for American schools provided by Edwin Williams. So this booklet would have likely been handed out in schools and academies across the United States after 1835, and it presents us a look at the educational syllabus of the time. A short perusal of the contents will give you an idea of what's contained, and if we turn to the preface, we can see a foreword by the author, who praises William Pinnock for his services to education. Edwin Williams describes how he used Pinnock's geographical data, combined within his book, and combined it with the most prominent facts from history. So, we'll turn to the contents and there are four topics we want to focus on. Tartary in general, independent Tartary, Chinese Tartary, and also Asiatic Russia. Because as we've discussed on this channel before, much of the land north of Mongolia and Manchuria was captured by the Russians in the 17th century. Before we delve in, there are a few things I'd like to bring your attention to. You'll notice these points are numbered, and that's because they correspond to a question which you can find at the end of each section. I've taken the liberty of bringing together a collection of the mentions of Tartary or Tartars in chronological order which appear in other sections of the book. After that, we'll examine the four topics I mentioned earlier. On page 21, when discussing the surface of the earth, we can see number 28 says, The name of deserts is also given to fertile lands, which are uninhabited, as the desert of Ukraine in Poland, which lies along the river Dnieper. Most of the deserts of Tartary, represented so dreadful and barren, are of this kind. It would be more proper to name them wildernesses. This clears up a lot of confusion some people have when reading of these areas. For example, Tartaria Deserta, a name used to refer to sections around southwestern Siberia, was not an actual desert. On page 23, we can see it discussing the empires, where it says that the word for a Mughal or Tartar emperor is a Khan. On page 32, when speaking of the globe model, it says the Greeks passed it to the Romans and then they passed it to the Arabs, Persians, Turks and Tartars. Page 34, when speaking of maps, it claims again the Greeks passed them to the Arabs, Romans and Persians, who then shared them with the Turks and the Western Tartars, whilst the Eastern Tartars received their maps from China. Just below, it claims that maps were spoken of in China as early as 2,207 years before Christ. On page 70, when discussing the Pacific Ocean, it describes the Sea of Kamchatka as lying on the eastern shores of Siberia and Tartary. On page 239, we get to the section on Russia, where it tells us that the Russian Empire is the largest in the world, extending from the Baltic in the west to North America in the east, of which it now owns a portion, of course referring to Alaska. Below it provides a comparative view of the other empires active at the time as well as ancient Persia, ancient Rome, and the Holy Roman Empire under Charles V. Russia is by far the largest active empire with 7 million square miles of land, and China is second with 3 million. The Chinese Empire of course including Tartary, with the rulers of China at this point being the Manchu Tartar dynasty. On page 242, we can see it describes the animals that inhabit the area around the Aral Sea. Horses, donkeys, antelopes and wolves, as well as a fierce animal called the Jolbart, which according to the Tartars was strong enough to carry off a horse. This is most likely describing the Caspian Tiger, one of the largest big cats to grace the modern period and was distributed across Central Asia from southern Russia to Afghanistan and the Caucasus to Xinjiang. The Caspian Tiger was confirmed extinct in 2003. On page 244, they're describing Moscow and the different edifices of varying nations. The Pagoda of China, the Mosque of Constantinople, 
the Cabaret of Spain, the gorgeous palaces of Greece and Rome, and interestingly, the Tartar Temple of Bukharia, obviously referring to the type of architecture seen in Bukhara and Samarkand. It says the people of Moscow are as diverse as the buildings, with Tartars, Turks, Greeks, Cossacks, Poles, Germans, Chinese, English and French all seen parading in the habits of their respective countries. A breakdown of Russia's inhabitants shows that 89% of its population resides in Europe, with only 3.5% living in Siberia. Page 249 provides us the history of Russia, where it says Russia was little known to other European nations as an independent kingdom until the 15th century, before which it was frequently subject to the Tatars. The first ruler who bore the title Tsar was Ivan Vasilievich, known as Ivan the Great, who about the year 1481 succeeded in freeing Russia from the dominion of the Tatars, and it notes this is when the Cossacks first appear in history. Curiously, this document refers to him as Ivan I, whereas today he is known as Ivan III, and it also notes that he introduced the use of firearms. On the next page, we see it claims Poland was anciently inhabited by the Vandals, a Scythian tribe. They were dispossessed by the Tatars and Russians, who then went on to form several small states, united under Duke Lech in the year 550. On page 253, it discusses John Sobieski, who it calls the most distinguished king to ever rule Poland. In 1686, he assisted the Holy Roman Empire in defending the city of Vienna from the Tatar and Turk forces of the Ottomans. On page 271, we get to Germany, where it mentions that whilst the early history of the Germans was lost in fable, ancient authors called them either Celts, Scythians, or Celto-Scythians. A note at the bottom tells us, nearly all the countries of Europe are supposed to have been peopled by the Celts. The compilers of universal history are of the opinion that they are descended from Goma, the eldest son of Japheth, who settled in Phrygia in Asia Minor and also that the Celti took the left hand, spreading over Poland, Hungary, Germany, France and Spain, whilst the descendants of Magog, Goma's brother, moved eastward and peopled Tartary. Two pages later, and we can see it says that before the invasion of Augustus, nephew of Julius Caesar, Germany was peopled by barbarous hordes who wandered from place to place, much like the Tartars of the present day. The present day, of course, being in 1835. Page 398 begins the history of Turkey, where it tells us that after the fall of the Saracen Empire arose the Turks, a warlike people of Tartary whom the Saracens had called for aid, but were afterwards subdued by them. Number three here is the answer to the question, what is and has been Tartary? What was its ancient name? Tartary, more anciently called Scythia, has long been, and still is, the asylum of numerous wandering hordes or nations. From this inexhaustible reservoir of people issued all those numerous emigrations which so long proved the scourge of the rest of the earth. Question 4. What celebrated people came from Tartary, and from whom were they descended? From this country came the Avars, the Mughals, the Tartars and the Turks, all of whom deduce their origin from Japheth, the son of Noah. Question 5. What do the Tartars say is their proper name? Who was the first king of the Tartars? His son Turk, they say, was the first king or Khan of those nations now known by the separate names of Turks, Tartars and Mughals. And the Tartars especially assert that their proper designation is Turks. Question 6. What is attributed to Turk? Note. What gave rise to the two great empires of the Tartars and Mughals? To this Prince Turk is attributed many of those inventions which barbarous nations commonly ascribe to their first sovereign. Alanza Khan, a descendant of Turk, having two sons, Tartar and Mughal, divided his dominions between them, and thus gave rise to the two empires of the Tartars and the Mughals. Question 8. In what part dwelt the Tartarian nation to which the name of Turks has been more peculiarly given? The Tartarian nation to which the name of Turks has been peculiarly given dwelt between the Black and Caspian Seas and became first known in the 7th century when Heraclius, Emperor of the East, took them into his service, in which they so distinguished themselves by their bravery in the conquest of Persia that the Saracen or Arabian Caliphs selected them for their armies. Question 18. By whom was Bayezid conquered and what was his fate? Note. What were the chief conquests of Tamerlane? I must admit that note 
kind of gives away the answer. But Tamerlane, being provoked at the haughty insolence of Bayezet and penetrated with regret at the cruelties of the unfeeling tyrant, made war against him and gave him battle near Angora, on the same spot where Pompey had formerly defeated Mithridatus. Tamerlane, one of the most celebrated kings of the Tartar nations, began his reign about the year 1370 and died at the age of 63 in 1405, during which period he conquered Persia, Turkestan, a great part of Russia, and also of Hindustan, sacked Aleppo, Baghdad and Damascus, and conquered the whole of Syria and Asia Minor. After taking Bayezid, the Emperor of the Turks prisoner, he returned to Samarkand, the capital of the empire, and having projected an expedition against China, died on his march towards the country. Page 405, we get to Asia, and question 17 asks, what are the chief nations of Asia? The principal divisions or nations of Asia are Asiatic Russia, China, Japan, Hindustan, the Burman Empire, Afghanistan, Persia, Asiatic Turkey, Tartary, Siam, Cochin China, Tonquin Arabia, and the Isles. So we can see Tartary there, quite clearly listed as one of the principal divisions or nations of Asia. Page 406, when talking of the divisions of Asiatic Turkey, it says this, It is divided into eastern and western. The eastern part comprehends Kurdistan, Al Jazeera, Iraq Arabi, Diyarbakir, and parts of Armenia. The western comprises Natolia, or Asia Minor, Syria, and Palestine. There's a note at the bottom which says Georgia, which formerly belonged to Turkey, is now wholly in the possession of Russia, as well as a portion of Armenia. The country now called Turkomania is in Tartary. So that's the end of the mentions of Tartary in other sections of this 1835 book, distributed to American schools and academies in the mid-1800s. This is before the Civil War, so pre-Civil War history information about Tartary and its inhabitants. Make sure you check out the other sections if you're interested, or watch the whole video to see them all in one place. We'll tackle those individual Tartaria sections, Russian Tartary, Chinese Tartary, Independent Tartary, and Tartary in general, in the next video.